So today we're going to levitate some objects and uh, I have a couple things here on the table. But before we get to that, let's have a look at the physics. So um, this trick, which we're going to levitate a few things, we're going to levitate some graphite, for instance. And this has to do with diamagnetic materials and Lenz's law. Now, if you have some material, of course, there's atoms in this material, and they all have magnetic moments because of the electric charges in these atoms that are kind of whizzing around and giving it a, uh, making it into a magnet. Now, if I stick one of these atoms in a magnetic field, um, there will be an induced magnetic moment from a change in the electric current of these atoms. So we get kind of, you see this extra little bit of, of induced magnetic moment that's in the opposite direction as the magnetic field. So this induced magnetic moment will always oppose the external magnetic field and it basically produces a magnet that is repelled from the magnetic field. So now if I have, for instance, a magnet here with a magnetic field pointing up and I stick a piece of graphite in this, there will be an induced magnetic moment pointing down. And therefore, it will repel uh, inside this magnetic field. So uh, let's have a look at this and see if we can get this to work. So here I have a magnet, um, kind of a strong magnet here. And I have a piece of graphite, which I will carefully uh, take this little square of graphite and we'll just put it on. So of course this is not magnetic now, it's just a piece of, uh, of, of carbon essentially. And now I put it on top of this magnet and we see that this magnetic field induces uh, a magnetic field that's opposite direction um, here. So you can see this thing floating and kind of bouncing around here. Just, just to show you that if I were to take this off and flip it, we see that the same thing is the case. This is it's not like a north or a south uh, magnetic field type thing. No matter what direction I put this graphite in, the induced magnetic field will be in the opposite direction. So another, um, if this is a kind of uh, what they call a diamagnet, and a perfect diamagnet is, is a, a superconductor. And so we can take a look at a superconductor here, but there are no room temperature superconductors. So I will need some liquid nitrogen here. And let's take this here. So I can take this uh, the superconducting magnet, and we're going to cool it down down to a low temperature at which this magnet becomes a superconductor. And what we can do is we're going to put it on top of this magnetic field here and watch what does it look like when you have a perfect uh, dia magnet. So I'm waiting for this this uh, stop bubbling so that I know it's at the right temperature. And it's almost there. Okay, so what we've got. So let's take this thing if I can get it out here. And I'm going to put it here, and we see that it is floating. In fact, it can kind of flip this thing and spin it and all kinds of stuff. Okay, And as it warms up, it loses its superconducting abilities. So there you have it. We have made a piece of graphite float, and we've also looked at a superconductor floating. And um, it's not magic, it's physics. And I'll see you next time. Well, thanks for watching. It looks like I survived today.
Um, but if you want to find out if I survive the next experiment, then um, remember to click like, click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.